Hades is a game that continues to introduce many new players, including myself, to the roguelike genre. It's been praised for everything from its gameplay and story to its music and art style. My personal praise for the game is for the different weapon choices that I wasn't expecting at all when I first got into the game. I mean, the cover just has a dude holding a sword on it, and at the price point of $25, I really wasn't expecting much more than that. So it caught me by surprise to see every single weapon have unique attacks and strengths that made them suited for different playstyles. And while there are many more apparent features to praise this game for that I'll mention throughout this video, by the end, I want to highlight something that dawned on me after playing that has changed my perspective on things even outside of the game. To make my point clearer, I want to first elaborate more on what I think made Hades such a great introductory game in so many players' eyes. When you first launch up Hades, the more apparent details that I just mentioned will be the first things that pop out at you. The title screen has a soundtrack that gets more and more intense the longer you stay on the menu, and then starting up a new game puts you almost immediately into the action so you can experience the gameplay within minutes. There's no 10 to 20 minute cutscene explaining everything that's going on. Only a few lines of dialogue, and then you're in. Using the theme of Greek mythology helped this work out since it's a theme that many people are already familiar with, at least to some extent. Making it very easy to understand the setting of the game without requiring too much extra explanation at the start to get you more familiar with it. And for anyone that knows very little of the subject, or has no interest in it at all, being put right into the action is something that players who just wanted to play something for an hour or two would enjoy. Within a few steps you enter your first fight and get your first glimpse of the combat. In a lot of games, your starting weapon usually isn't anything to brag about, but in Hades, each and every weapon you get your hands on is great in its own way. The developers didn't opt in for the default strategy of making your starting weapon feel really dull, and only after several hours of playing do you get a weapon or upgrade your existing one to a point that makes it feel good to use. The attack animations for all the weapons off the bat look fantastic and make every attack feel impactful, which again is surprising for a game with a $25 price tag. They even made using a shield as a weapon feel like more fun than I can say I've had with weapons in games with a much larger budget. It's hard to drop a game when you're put right into it and are getting great feedback when you only just started playing a few minutes ago. Then you progress through a room or two, and all of a sudden you're a ready cool weapon can now zap enemies, do extra damage, or do a variety of other different things. And every time you restart, you get to try a different set of boons until you find ones you like. Or you can continue experimenting until you discover all the different combinations you can form. The combat alone adds massively to the replayability of this game, whether you have any interest in the story or not. Now, like I said though, this game has also been praised up and down for its story. The beauty of it is that the story is somewhat optional, and yet there's still so many players that love it. You can choose to go out of your way to talk to all the different NPCs in the game as you play through your escape attempts to learn more about the overarching story and why Zagreus wants to reach the surface, or you can do the bare minimum of talking and just play through the game. Even during your escape attempts, while you're gathering boons and meeting new NPCs, you get a few lines of dialogue here and there that feed you more lore. What's great is that there's never a huge dump of dialogue during your actual runs that prevents anyone that just wants to play from doing so. But the people that do want to learn more can still do it while progressing through the game because it's kind of drip fed to you during your repeated attempts. I think this game managed to find the perfect balance between feeding the player's story and keeping them engaged with the gameplay, making it easy for players to jump in and out without much worry. I know for me personally there have been times where I've been interested in a game's story, but I knew a major event was coming up and I had to stop myself from progressing because I didn't know how long I'd get stuck watching a cutscene before I had to stop. The choice of the Hades developers to approach the story the way they did was a good one. This may be normal for a roguelike game, but for someone that has never played one, it was very convenient. I don't think the normal way of game storytelling would have suited a game like Hades. The number of things to discover between your first time playing the game and every single attempt after that, even after you've completed your first successful run to the surface, is massive. The game continues to introduce new features as you play to make running through the same levels feel way less repetitive than it normally would. The developers came up with a way to repeat the same content but keep it unique and interesting regardless of how many hours of gameplay you had. After 40 to 50 hours of playing, I was still finding new things to do in the game and characters with new dialogue to offer. And I know even after reaching the surface 10 times, there was still more to be discovered. Hades may very well not be the first game to do something like this, but this approach definitely helped lead to its success. With all this praise for Hades being a great and successful introductory game to the roguelike genre, it made me wonder how exactly they got players to have the motivation to keep playing after repeatedly dying for hours on end and possibly not making any further progress in their runs for several days. I'm not a very casual gamer, but in my mind, when a game is praised enough to reach a more general audience, I imagine it not being an overly difficult game with a good story and fun gameplay. Obviously there are exceptions, and Hades is one of them, but what made it an exception? Being difficult to beat is part of the appeal of roguelike games in general, as far as I can tell, and Hades definitely follows that standard, so as far as massive successes go, Hades doesn't exactly blend in with what I'd expect. 
This is when it dawned on me as to why everything in this game is drip fed to the player. No matter how many times you fail a run in this game, you're still always getting slightly stronger or being given slightly more information to digest. Every single feature in this game is designed in the same fashion. Even the god mode setting, which was created to make the game more accessible to a wider audience, doesn't give you the full benefits until you failed enough times. A lot of games do something similar to this in one form or another, but Hades took it to the extreme. Every time you die you can spend a bit more darkness to make yourself stronger, new dialogue is available to you from different NPCs, you can open up new features using gems stones you gather, you can gift NPCs nectar to gain new keepsakes, the keepsakes are then upgraded after using them on enough runs, you gather titan blood as you successfully clear bosses, and then spend it on weapon unlocks, and this one isn't a game feature, but every escape attempt you make, you start to naturally learn more from playing to help you eventually reach your first successful escape. The list of features that are designed this way seems almost endless, so even if you do get stuck at the same spot for a while in your escape attempts, it never really feels that way, because you can still see improvements being made. There's never a massive jump in power levels from one attempt to the next, and this seems to be very much intentional. And I think this is something that a lot of us don't think about when it comes to things outside of video games like Hades. Improvements outside of video games are way less apparent and take a lot more time to see the benefits, which might be why people enjoy playing video games so much. Outside of games though, there are times where you can feel stuck and attempt to do things to improve yourself, and at a glance it can seem like nothing is changing at all. After all, we don't have any stat pages to tell us we've gotten better or anything like that, but as long as you have the will to keep trying and continue to ask yourself, what can I do better, eventually, whether you realize it or not, improvements will be made. The problem is that it's so gradual that a lot of us tend to give up before we can see the bigger results, which can sometimes take several years to see, depending on what exactly you're trying to improve. I've noticed that the older I get, the more I seem to forget this, and I know I'm not the only one. As an adult, it can be hard to remember all of your past failures, but think about it. How did everyone first learn to walk? It didn't happen after only one attempt. It may have taken someone 20 attempts to walk without falling, and it may have taken someone else 100 attempts. The number of attempts doesn't matter. What matters is that you got there eventually, because you didn't stop trying. We all have our own pace. The difference between a kid trying to walk and an adult trying to improve at something is that a kid forgets their failures within minutes and tries again. Through conversations I've had, I can tell you it's very common to hear someone say they want to do something big, but then backtrack once they realize just how much effort it would take to get to where they want. Just remember that this is how everyone feels when they first start, but once you get going, it actually gets easier rather than harder, which is what I think makes Hades such a gem. It's helped me relearn something that I had forgotten, and that feeling you get on your first successful escape attempt is not something that's tied solely to a video game. That payoff exists in anything that takes time before you see results. I like to call this concept incremental improvement. Games in general get a lot of bad rep for being a waste of time and energy, and as someone that games a lot, it's always bothered me when I hear someone say that. While on the surface video games do seem like a waste of time, I can say that in my many years of gaming, I've learned more valuable lessons from it than I have from traditional means. I plan on making more videos in this style, but I won't say every new video from now on will be like this. I mostly make Overwatch content right now, but if this is something you'd be interested in seeing more of, let me know. Thanks for watching. Someday I'll go even farther.